Welcome back to the Shigiaki Podcast, where we bring timeless wisdom and cutting-edge science together for your healthiest years after 60. I'm Dr. Mark Hyman, and sitting across from me, as always, is the legendary Japanese physician who inspired millions to live past 100, Dr. Shigiaki Hinohara. Thank you, Mark, and welcome, everyone. I always say living long is not enough. You must live well. And for that, understanding what your body needs and doesn't need is essential. Exactly. And one supplement we've been hearing a lot about lately is magnesium. Social media makes it sound like a miracle cure, from sleep and stress to muscle cramps and heart health. Yes, magnesium is crucial. In fact, more than 300 enzymes in your body rely on it to function. But here's the catch. Not everyone should be taking magnesium supplements. And many who need it aren't taking the right kind. So today, we'll unpack this in detail. First, we'll reveal four warning signs, serious red flags, that mean you should never take magnesium without guidance. Then, we'll share five powerful signs your body is crying out for it daily. And we'll also talk about timing, how to combine it with other nutrients for maximum absorption, and when magnesium might make your condition worse instead of better. So, if you've ever felt muscle cramps at night, unexplained fatigue, or even heart palpitations, you'll want to stay with us, because magnesium can either heal or harm, depending on how you use it. If you like the content on Shigiaki Podcast, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to receive the latest videos. In my years of practice, I've seen both miracles and mistakes, and often, the difference is just one capsule. Let's make sure your next capsule is the right one. Let's begin with one of the most misunderstood reactions, feeling more anxious or restless after taking magnesium. Magnesium is often promoted as a natural relaxant, right? But here's the twist. For a small group of people, especially those with adrenal fatigue or high cortisol, taking magnesium, especially the wrong form, can actually make things worse. Yes, Mark. This typically happens when people take magnesium citrate or oxide on an empty stomach. These forms are more likely to cause digestive upset, sudden drops in blood pressure, or increased heart rate, which can mimic or worsen anxiety. I've seen this in patients over 60 who already had irregular stress responses. Instead of calm, they get jittery. Exactly. The body's stress system is very sensitive. If someone's nervous system is already in fight or flight mode, Suddenly relaxing the muscles or lowering blood pressure too fast can feel like a threat, not a relief. They may interpret the calming effect as a loss of control. And it's not just mental. People might feel lightheaded, nauseous, or even feel their heart fluttering. This is particularly common if they're also low in sodium or potassium, which often go hand in hand with magnesium imbalances. So what's the fix? First, switch to magnesium glycinate or bisglycinate which are gentler on the stomach and better tolerated by the nervous system. Second, never start with a high dose. Try 100 milligrams at night with food. And finally, add sea salt or potassium-rich foods to the diet to create better electrolyte balance. That's wise. I also tell my older patients, don't expect magnesium to be a miracle pill on day one. It's a nutrient, not a drug. The benefits build slowly and depend heavily on how balanced the rest of the body is. Now, let's talk about one of the most critical warnings, magnesium and kidney disease. Most people don't realize that magnesium is cleared from the body almost entirely through the kidneys. If those kidneys aren't functioning properly, magnesium can build up to dangerous levels in the bloodstream. That's correct, Mark. In patients with chronic kidney disease, CKD, or impaired renal function. The risk isn't just inefficiency, it's toxicity. These individuals are more likely to develop hypermagnesemia, a condition where magnesium levels become too high. Symptoms may start subtly, nausea, weakness, or muscle fatigue, but can quickly progress to low blood pressure, slow heart rate, and in severe cases, even cardiac arrest. That's why I always advise caution. If you're over 60 and have ever been told you have reduced kidney function or have electrolyte disturbances like low calcium or potassium, taking magnesium without supervision is risky. A healthy kidney will flush out excess magnesium, 
but a damaged one cannot keep up. And remember, many seniors may not even know they have mild kidney problems. That's why, before starting magnesium supplements, especially at higher doses, it's crucial to get basic blood work creatinine, EGFR, and magnesium levels. It's quick and can prevent serious complications. In clinical settings, we only prescribe magnesium to kidney patients when we can closely monitor blood levels and adjust dosing based on their filtration rate. And we almost never recommend magnesium oxide or high-dose citrate forms in these cases. So, the key takeaway is, if you have kidney disease or any metabolic condition involving electrolytes, magnesium should only be taken under medical guidance. Do not self-prescribe, especially based on online advice. The risk outweighs the benefit. This is something I see all the time. Patients assume that more is better. But if your magnesium levels are already normal, taking more than 350 milligrams per day from supplements can cause real issues, especially in older adults. Many people don't realize that magnesium is a natural laxative. Once the body has enough, it tries to flush out the excess, often through the digestive tract. This leads to diarrhea, bloating, stomach cramps, and in sensitive individuals, long-term gut imbalance. And the problem is worsened when people take multiple supplements without realizing how much magnesium they're consuming. For example, a multivitamin might contain 150 milligrams, their magnesium capsule has 300 milligrams, and a protein powder adds another 100 milligrams. That's well over the recommended upper limit and it's all unnecessary if your blood levels are already healthy. The truth is, the body has a tight balance for electrolytes. You don't want to disrupt it by constantly forcing extra magnesium in. Think of it like water in a sponge. Once it's saturated, adding more only causes overflow and mess. That's why I advise most patients to start with food-based sources. Leafy greens like spinach, pumpkin seeds, black beans, and even dark chocolate offer absorbable magnesium that doesn't overwhelm your system. And it comes with natural cofactors fiber, potassium, and antioxidants, which help your body use the mineral more efficiently. Plus, there's virtually no risk of overdose from food alone. So if you're not deficient, don't force feed your cells. You're not doing yourself any favors. Instead, maintain healthy levels through a balanced, magnesium-rich diet and let your body tell you if it needs more. Now, William, here's another concern I've been seeing a lot. People dealing with anxiety or depression who start taking magnesium without even understanding what's really going on with their mental health. Absolutely. It's very common. Magnesium does have calming effects on the nervous system. So when someone's under chronic stress or having trouble sleeping, it can seem like a quick fix. But the issue is, they're using it like a sedative without knowing the full picture. Exactly. And often, they'll say things like, I feel a bit better when I take magnesium at night, but the real symptoms, racing thoughts, loss of interest, emotional numbness, are still there underneath. The supplement just masks them, and that's dangerous. Because when someone self-treats like this, they might avoid going to a doctor or mental health professional. That delay in proper diagnosis can actually worsen their condition over time. And there's also the risk of misinterpreting the benefit. Just because you sleep better after taking magnesium doesn't mean you've solved your anxiety. It could still be a biochemical imbalance, unresolved trauma, or chronic emotional stress that needs deeper attention. That's why we always recommend a proper mental health evaluation if symptoms persist. Magnesium can support recovery, yes, but it should never be used as the main strategy to treat psychological disorders. So, if you're someone who's been relying on magnesium to calm down, please take a step back. Ask yourself, am I avoiding something deeper? It might be time to talk to a professional who can guide you through it. Now that we've addressed when magnesium might not be the answer, Let's flip the coin. What about the signs that you actually do need it? One of the most overlooked but clear signs is nighttime muscle cramping, especially in the legs. People often describe waking up in the middle of the night with sudden painful cramps in the calves or feet. That's a classic red flag for low magnesium. These nocturnal cramps or even subtle muscle twitches are tied to poor neuromuscular transmission. Magnesium plays a key role in relaxing muscle fibers after they contract. Without enough of it, 
the nervous system becomes overly excitable and the muscles tense up involuntarily. And here's the thing. Older adults are more prone to this because their magnesium absorption naturally declines with age. Even with a decent diet, they may not be getting enough into their cells. Exactly. Add in medications like diuretics or acid blockers, and the risk goes up even more. So, if someone over 60 is experiencing leg cramps or eye twitches regularly at night, they should seriously consider low magnesium as a potential cause. The good news is, there's a gentle and effective form of magnesium that works well for this. Magnesium glycinate. It's highly absorbable and tends to be well tolerated by the digestive system. And taken about 30 to 60 minutes before bedtime, it not only helps with muscle relaxation, it often improves sleep quality too. Let's move to another big clue that your body might be asking for magnesium, chronic fatigue. I'm not talking about being tired after a long hike or a busy day. I mean people who feel drained even after sleeping or doing minimal activity. Exactly. That persistent feeling of exhaustion can often be traced back to how your cells produce energy, specifically ATP, the body's fuel. And magnesium is essential in the creation of ATP. Without enough magnesium, your mitochondria simply can't keep up. So even if someone's eating well and sleeping enough, if they're low on magnesium, they might still feel like they're running on empty. I've seen this a lot. People say, I just walked up the stairs and I felt wiped out. That's not normal aging. That's cellular fatigue. It's even more common in seniors. As we age, our ability to absorb magnesium drops, but our energy needs for basic functions like walking, standing, or even digestion remain high. The disconnect leads to that chronic tiredness that many people accept as just getting older. The fix? First, confirm it's not another medical issue. Then consider magnesium, especially bioavailable forms like magnesium malate or glycinate. They're less likely to cause digestive upset and are better absorbed than the cheaper oxide versions. Timing matters too. For fatigue, I recommend taking magnesium earlier in the day with breakfast or lunch. That way, you're supporting your energy production when your body is most active. Nighttime magnesium is great for sleep, but if energy is the issue, daytime supplementation makes more sense. Listen to your body's rhythms. If you feel exhausted after small tasks or constantly say, I need another nap, it may be your body quietly asking for more magnesium. Let's talk about one of the most alarming symptoms people experience irregular heartbeat or palpitations. It can feel like your heart is skipping beats, fluttering, or pounding for no clear reason. And yes, magnesium might be part of the puzzle. Magnesium plays a vital role in how the heart's muscle cells contract and relax. When levels drop too low, it can interfere with the electrical impulses that keep your heartbeat steady. Some people feel it as mild palpitations, others as a more intense thumping sensation. But let's be clear. Not all arrhythmias are caused by low magnesium. Heart rhythm issues can have many causes, from anxiety to medications to more serious cardiac conditions. It's important to get checked by a cardiologist before assuming anything. However, if your doctor has ruled out major problems and you still experience these irregular beats, checking your magnesium and also your potassium is a smart next step. Both minerals work together to maintain the heart's rhythm. That's why I often recommend dietary sources of both. Foods like avocados, leafy greens, nuts, and bananas can help supply potassium. And you can combine them with magnesium-rich foods like pumpkin seeds, spinach, and almonds. If needed, a magnesium supplement, especially magnesium torate or glycinate, may help support the heart without causing digestive issues. These forms are well tolerated and specifically beneficial for cardiovascular health. And don't forget hydration. Dehydration can throw off your electrolyte balance quickly, especially in hot weather or during exercise. Let's move on to one of the most overlooked signs of magnesium deficiency, especially in older adults, chronic constipation. I see this a lot in my practice. People think it's just about fiber or water, but magnesium plays a huge role. Absolutely. Magnesium helps pull water into the intestines, softening stool and making it easier to pass. Without enough of it, the bowels slow down, 
This can lead to discomfort, bloating, and even a buildup of toxins in the gut over time. That's why I often recommend magnesium citrate or magnesium oxide, specifically for people dealing with long-term constipation. These forms have a mild osmotic effect. They draw water into the colon without being too harsh or irritating. Right. And one thing to keep in mind is dosing. Too much can swing the other way and cause diarrhea. So it's important to start low and go slow. For most people, 200-300 milligrams per day of magnesium citrate is a safe range to support regularity. And timing matters too. Taking it in the evening can support both sleep and bowel function by the next morning. It's a gentle but powerful shift. And for many older adults, this can mean avoiding dependence on laxatives. And for those already using fiber supplements or probiotics, adding magnesium can complete the picture. It doesn't replace lifestyle changes, but it fills an important gap, especially as absorption efficiency declines with age. So if someone over 60 is experiencing constipation that's not resolved with diet alone, checking magnesium levels or trying a low-dose supplement could make a big difference. And always remember, if constipation comes with other symptoms like abdominal pain or bleeding, they should see a doctor. But for mild, ongoing issues, magnesium might be the missing piece. There's one more sign we can't skip, osteoporosis and age-related muscle weakness. So many older adults chalk this up to normal aging, but magnesium plays a surprisingly big role here. Magnesium is often overshadowed by calcium and vitamin D in bone health discussions. But in truth, magnesium helps regulate both. Without it, calcium doesn't get absorbed properly, and vitamin D remains inactive. I've seen this so often. Patients take calcium supplements, even vitamin D, but they're still losing bone density. When we check, their magnesium is low. It's a missing link in the whole equation of strong bones and muscles. And not just bones. Magnesium is essential for ATP production which fuels muscle contraction. As magnesium levels drop with age, people may notice weakness, slower reflexes, even higher risk of falls. Absolutely. That's why I encourage my patients over 60 to include magnesium-rich foods in their daily routine. Almonds, dark, leafy greens like spinach or kale, and fermented soy products and FEH, they're excellent sources and very senior-friendly. And for those with limited diet or absorption issues, a supplement like magnesium glycinate can help. It's gentle on the stomach and well-absorbed, but it's important to pair it with a balanced approach, movement, enough protein, and sun exposure for vitamin D activation. Exactly. You can't out-supplement a poor lifestyle, but if someone's struggling with early signs of frailty, shrinking height, muscle aches, poor posture, magnesium should be on their radar. What we've covered today shows just how critical magnesium is and how easy it is to either overlook it or misuse it. From warning signs like heart palpitations and anxiety to muscle cramps, fatigue, and even bone loss, it touches every system. And what worries me most is how many people self-diagnose. They hear magnesium helps with stress or sleep and start taking high doses without knowing if they truly need it. That can cause more harm than good, especially if they have kidney issues or already have normal magnesium levels. Exactly. What we really want people to take away is this. Magnesium is powerful, but it's not a magic fix. It works best when used wisely, with awareness of your body's needs and medical background. For most older adults, simple dietary shifts go a long way. A handful of almonds, more leafy greens, some seeds, and better sleep habits that can naturally replenish magnesium without risks. And if supplements are needed, go for the right form, like glycinate or citrate, and always monitor how you feel. Subtle improvements in energy, mood, digestion, or sleep are good signs. And if you're unsure, get tested, speak to your doctor, and don't try to self-medicate complex issues like depression or arrhythmias with a bottle of magnesium.